2015, when I was pregnant with Huru on TV, mm -hmm. I got a lot of body shaming. It really? was so weird. Mm. It was a lot of it was from men. They'd say things like, you're too pregnant to be on TV. The rabbit trails we've taken, the rabbit holes we've gone through in this whole story, we're going back, we're going forward, but also Janet had a call and needed to pick a, Some sugar. Some pick sugar, here. thanks to uh, Movin Peak. Yeah. Yeah, so we are really glad to be able to continue. There are many reflections I think I'm, I've been getting as your story goes on, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm really, I think if we can revisit the build of, of uh, Inuadada, mm -hmm. P the story you aired way back when you were in Citizen around period shaming, mm -hmm. um, it aired on you. Uh, were you the producer for it? Or? I was the, it was on the show that I used to host uh -huh. Monday Special. Right. So it was produced by Lulu and Judy. Mm -hmm. And then I, it was used as a curtain raiser yeah. to my panel discussion. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember your panelists that day? There was Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. The CS? I'll take that back. Mm -hmm. Ministry of Education, oh, not okay. the CS. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, the sanitary pads um, docket was with the Ministry of Education. Yeah, yeah. There was a pad manufacturing company. Mm -hmm. I believe those were the two kind of main panelists mm -hmm. that were there. Mm -hmm. And we were just asking, why is period poverty an issue? Mm -hmm. Why are girls dropping out of school because mm -hmm. they don't have pads? Yeah. At the time, the feature showed them using chicken feathers and goat hide, mm -hmm. and people were thinking, where's the budgetary allocation? Mm -hmm. And there wasn't really a good answer. I know what came out was the budgetary allocation is not sufficient. Mm. There's still a lot of stigma. It hasn't been prioritized. Mm. The power about mainstreaming conversations mm -hmm. like that, and I think the world over, mm -hmm. we've seen the power of mainstreaming mm -hmm. social issues. Mm -hmm. I don't know why it hasn't been integrated as a top-notch development agenda. Yeah. Everything from MTV Sugar yeah. changed kind of the landscape of, Completely. of HIV, AIDS, and young yeah. people. Yeah. Um, Periods of shame change the conversation mm. in the country mm -hmm. because because of that story and because mm -hmm. it was on prime time news mm -hmm. um, on the most watched station. Yeah, the budget the parliamentarians were forced to increase the budget uh, allocation. Uh, location. They doubled it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, civil society began to think through a menstrual hygiene policy, which was launched in 2020, mm -hmm. um, and more organizations and conversations came out of it. And organizations also that were dealing with other. Um, mm. uh, reproductive health, maternal child issues also yeah. began putting uh, menstrual health as one of the key topics. Yes. And uh, looking for resources for that. Yeah, because yeah. they saw the link between school dropout, teen pregnancy. Yeah. And 10 years later, a lot has changed, but a lot remains the same. Mm -hmm. Because it hasn't really been integrated as a development agenda. Not yet. Yeah. Not yet. And yeah. so it'll keep going round in circles. Yeah. We still have high rates of period poverty we yeah. still have high rates of teen pregnancy yep. linked to it mm, so mm. it's bittersweet yeah but we're still seeing we're seeing a lot more voices and yeah. allies and yeah. policies and conversations yeah. to have menstrual hygiene day talked about on the news in every station may every 28th. year may 28th yeah. is a big yeah. deal and whenever yeah. i'm on i say you know what guys this wasn't yeah. the case five years yeah. ago True. so for me this is a win it's a it's a huge win yes uh, but as you say a, a lot more still needs to be a lot that. more but what was that trigger during that show for you that made you think what can i do as janet the girls using those unsanitary products mm. chicken feathers mm. goat hide soil God. it was the biggest trigger mm. I, I think mm. A lot of people can't shake that out. Mm. So that was mm. the trigger. Mm. And the fact that it directly affects school attendance mm. and performance. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, wait, this is a natural biological function. Mm. I'm on my period. Mm. I can't help it. But now I can't go to school. Mm. Or if I'm if I'm really desperate, which is a huge other conversation after I have sex for pads, mm. then I get pregnant. Mm. And I was trying to avoid one problem only to fall into an even bigger one. Bigger, longer term uh, yeah. effect. Yeah. So the performance and attendance in school mm. was very triggering, mm. but also just the product. Mm. So mm. Inuadada came to first of all, provide access to products mm -hmm. as an intervention, mm -hmm. and then talk about what needs to be done in terms of stigma, mm -hmm. policy. Mm -hmm. And so about three, four years later, we did the book my first time, mm -hmm. which showcased different stories mm -hmm. to highlight, mm -hmm. uh, to destigmatize, but mm -hmm. also to showcase how diverse mm -hmm. periods are, are in terms of people's experiences, yeah. whether it's disruptive or good, mm -hmm. it's very diverse. They're as diverse as the women or girls who, who experience who, who experience it, it right? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. people who are visually impaired, we don't yeah. think about them. Yeah. People, one of the women in the book is uh, formerly incarcerated, we don't think about that. Mm -hmm. So um, it was a project I really enjoyed putting together just because it brought and out... That that came out as from Inuadada? Yes, it was mm -hmm. an Inuadada. It was like Inuadada Janet project. It mm -hmm. was um, 
2018, when mm -hmm. I was pregnant with my second born, mm -hmm. for both babies, I had pregnancy sickness the first trimester. Mm -hmm. But who is Janet? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be in bed, but I'm like, I'm bored, I need mm -hmm. to do something. Mm -hmm. So I started, thinking about, <laughs> yeah, I started mm -hmm. thinking about why is period stigma still such a thing? Mm -hmm. What can we do? I'm very passionate, you know, like you are about mm -hmm. storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I just think to myself, if we hear people's stories, mm -hmm. we'll not only normalize this process, mm -hmm. but we'll shed light into the diverse experiences. Mm -hmm. So initially, it was going to be like a digital, campaign but the more i thought about it the more i thought i want there to be a resource that lives in shelves and libraries mm. where girls can see themselves in mm. every page yeah so i thought of a very diverse group mm. of people mm -hmm. then i also thought of men there's about mm. eight men featured mm. in the book because mm. at some point each of them has come across a period yeah. and so that was the angle for mm. them mm. and so before i knew it it just kind of became this project then i said let's have them photographed so mm. that we destigmatize by mm. showing their faces mm. Mm. And so that took an entire sort of like six months or so of planning, mm. coordinating. Did you have like a team? I had a team. Mm -hmm. I had a team. They were super helpful because mm -hmm. some of it include, needed some travel. I also yeah. worked with menstrual champions mm. to guide me and say, mm. oh, there's this lady who mm. can give you a story from a 76-year-old perspective. Yeah. She's oh, linked wow. to this organization. Yeah. Go speak to her. Mm. So that also helped. Mm. Um, and, and then I shot it in January of 2019. Mm. I timed the first week of January when no one is doing anything. Oh, yeah. Uh, it worked so, like the second oh, week, technically yeah, 7th, yeah. 7th to 11th. Yeah. But we booked everyone from October yeah. of 2018. So, so they are available that week. And I was still yeah. pregnant by mm. then. I had my mm. baby in September and I was <laughs> busy like in October having the team say, book yeah. them and breastfeeding and yeah. everything. Yeah. And then it, it worked out really well mm. because 7th, and it was block shooting. Mm -hmm. So we ended up shooting 35 people in a week wow. and another few in subsequent weeks. Yeah. And so we had the material ready in yeah. like a month, but then yeah. it had to be edited and mm. this and that. Mm. And yeah, I think in 2019, I kind of announced it, but mm -hmm. in 2020, mm. launched it just before COVID. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we had started a book tour, then COVID hit. Yeah. So we yeah. kind of transitioned all the conversations online, online which yeah. made a really big difference. We had yeah. like an online period party yeah. and I, you know, who knew? All these things kind of opened the door for the partnerships I have today, which is really interesting. Look at that. Which is really interesting. When you lead, I think, with what feels right, yeah. it kind of comes back. Yeah. yeah. And what are the journey of building the organization? So um, at some point, you're still in media. Yeah. You're transitioning uh, you, out, out of Citizen. Mm -hmm. um, was there a moment where you said, I will actually focus on this and this alone? I think that was in 2017, mm -hmm. after Goalkeepers. Mm. So I said, this is it. I'm yeah. going to focus on Inuadada. Mm. But it's been hard. Mm. Even now, I have to say it's still a journey mm. because you'd be surprised that um, organizations which are maybe more local, mm -hmm. not that easy to mm. put together. Then it's women-led. Mm. Mm. The timing is great, though, now, because a lot of people have realized yep. Sometimes the organizations that may not have the same structures as the biggest mm. ones are doing a lot of work. And the localization agenda is also big with funders. There you go. Yeah. So in a, in a sense, now we're mm. really starting to kind of build on the capacity that's mm -hmm. required to mm -hmm. put all the major structures in place but mm -hmm. also scale capacity mm -hmm. so it's still a journey did you have when you are starting it yeah um not even starting it when like after goalkeepers what was your immediate things did you need to like you registered it in 2014 yeah did, did you have like volunteers running it it's been so weird it was mm -hmm. it was literally a one two man three man show yeah because a lot of the time, I'm the kind of person who needs to marinate on something mm. before I just make a decision. Mm. And I think that's why I wanted it to focus on advocacy, because mm -hmm. it's something that you can do from wherever you are. And it's both ad, ad public advocacy, mm -hmm. you know, for behavior change. Yes. But also political advocacy for, for policy, policy change. change. Yeah. So I wanted to focus on the element of information sharing, because mm. that was also within my control mm, yeah, and it's yeah. it's digital it's what you would do mm. it's what i could do and mm -hmm. it's how i could partner mm -hmm. without it being a physical yeah. event or without right. it having too much resourcing right. as i built towards a strategic plan mm -hmm. and built towards a team mm. so that's kind of how i scaled mm. it mm. um and still scaling mm. but it started to take its shape 2017 2018 mm -hmm. then with the book again mm. the digital yeah. piece really opened up it blew up, it blew up and then mm. in 2020 mm -hmm. As the period parties and everything were happening, mm -hmm. the PAD project reached out. The PAD project are based out of the US and India. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, we've seen some of your work. Mm -hmm. We actually give PAD making machines to, to local organizations. Mm -hmm. Would you be interested? I'm like, yeah, that's so full circle because mm -hmm. it's where the advocacy meets the impact. Yeah. So we started having the conversation because of COVID. It took a while back yeah. and forth before yeah. the machine came. Mm -hmm. Literally took like two years. And mm. so in May 2022, the mm. machine landed. We have a center in Korogosho. Mm -hmm. Why Korogosho? That's where we had done a lot of advocacy. So mm. it felt right to have a center there. Mm. 
And then we hired women to make parts. We mm. make up to 500 pieces a day. Mm. And that has formed a core part of even our plan and structure and yeah. team. Yeah. And it's been almost a year, mm. and now we are likely to be going into something. <laughs> I don't even know if I can say much right now. Mm. But it's an exciting next phase mm. of scaling. I would want to hear I what think that is. Yeah. maybe by the time this comes out, you yeah. say by the time this yeah. episode this, comes out. This is this coming out around April, end of April. Oh, so, okay, hopefully yeah. by then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hopefully by then. Mm. So mm. it's just now we're at a better position where mm. now because we have this very solid um, centerpiece of a project, yeah. it's allowing us to diversify yeah. and plug in and partner yeah. in a way that we'd always hope to. So it's yeah. kind of centered us. Mm. Mm. Um, but also the intersectionalities with period poverty are several. There's yeah. gender-based violence, because even the women and girls who we work with, 99% of them are, are victims of oh, GBV. So we do psychosocial support. Mm, mm. And then also there's always a link to financial literacy and inclusion. For nomenclature purposes, do we say victims? Do we say... Survivors. survivors. Yeah, I was going to say survivors. Yeah. <laughs> I think and I think some of them still feel like victims because they haven't quite gone through yeah. the psychosocial support. Exactly. So I... I do like to say survivors. Some mm. of them insist. I'm not a mm. survivor yet. Mm. What am I surviving? Look at that, yeah. But yes, we can. I like what mm. you're saying. I think mm. we can stick to survivor because it shows hope and promise mm. of like you can you can navigate mm. your trauma, even though you might have to live with it. Mm. You can navigate mm. it in a way. Mm. Yeah. I remember us having a conversation at the recent a hike about like what challenges yeah. you have. So this is Janet Mugwa. You're known yeah. uh, for you know being a media personality. Um, we, we, uh, we'll explore a little bit about your moderation, but then now you're forming an organization. What are the challenges for, what are the unique challenges that mm. are, 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 are yours? <laughs> First of all, it's, I, it's not like you really know what you're doing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you're leading with heart. Oh, which is amazing. Well, yeah, because yeah. you're just like, this needs Zeke to be Dinti done. who says that, leading with heart. Leading like, with heart, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, because at the end of the day, I'm also not a technical person. Yeah. So the unique challenges were just feeling like this is not really a space that I have any background information mm -hmm. on. I do know there's an issue. I do know I can talk about the issue and I know we can drive solutions. Yeah. So the unique challenge was also just validating the fact that your mm. concern matters mm. and you can make a difference. Yeah. It may not be as linear as other people do it. And it's never meant to be. Anyway. It's never meant to be, mm -hmm. but I was like, okay, mm. but navigate it as best as you can. Mm. I was always nervous to ask questions for mm. fear of, Psh, this is why you don't, need to be here you don't really mm. know what you're doing mm. um but over the years you a lot of that you shed a lot of it mm. you focus mm. on what is the problem at hand yeah what are the low hanging fruits yeah. Yeah. if i have this platform where yeah. i can convene people mm. Mm. where i can mainstream the conversation mm. and, and collaborate yeah. then do that which as is you a build. very unique thing it is media yeah. and advocacy exactly. is the unique thing that i think in Wadada brought into the space is yeah. a combination yeah. of media and advocacy mm. so mm. raising awareness and also um, opening up the space to be quite women and youth-led. Mm. We have a cohort called Inuadado Voices, mm -hmm. so they're youth advocates. Mm. And right now, they're essentially doing like all the social media. Mm. And I want to get away from Inuadado being Janet. Mm -hmm. I'm now yeah. really happy with how organically it's mm. becoming. I, you kind of want the power to be in the hands of, of the, the people. people. That's 100%. true. 100%. That's true. It takes a while. You need it to does. have that conversation with yourself. Yeah. Not out of pride, yeah. but out of knowing how best do you release the reins. How, I, I, have you communicated vision enough? Have you? Exactly. You know, those are really hard questions. Yeah. But my team tells me we need to demaximize DD. Like, oh. Because like, uh, Maxi, <laughs> DD is known with Maxi. So yeah. how, yet it's doing so many other things yeah. that because we are having this conversation, probably only people think this, this, this is, is it. Yeah. And I'm um, it. Yes. But there is so much more. So I, I hear what you're you saying. You can relate. But it's yeah. also, I think it's good for it to happen at its own time. Yeah. And so that's why this is, the, this conversation is a conversation that I started feeling in my gut. Yeah. I just, mm. when I see even now, one of our mm. youth advocates attended a women's summit on my behalf. Look at that. And they were on my panel. In yeah. fact, the panel that I had the other day had Mutsi, who's 23, Amina, who's 26. Mm. That's what I love to see. Mm. Mm. And they couldn't believe. Later, they were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I, I was on a panel. I didn't think mm. that they were thinking that. But come mm. to, when you really put it mm. to perspective, mm. yeah, they don't get a lot of chances mm. to do panels. Mm. Mm. So that for me is mm. the new normal for the yeah. foundation is to have to have it like youth and, and yeah. women-led, yeah. And it's really beautiful what you're saying because at some point also we be, we, we build <coughs> cliques and um, what are they called? Um, those gatekeepers. Yes. And we become, because you've been the voice in it or you've been the face of it, then everything has got to go through you. So just letting that go and yeah. creating spaces for other people. I also learned, you know, that we are not, I'm not youth. 
So I can't be in the youth space. You know, I can't, I can't Sorry, occupy yeah. the seat that yeah. a young person can, rightfully yeah. should be occupying. But you're one of the, at least you're, you recognize it. There are people who just insist. They're yeah. just like, Ata Mimi, even if I'm not youth, yeah. I'm like, please yeah. move away. Yeah. Let them just occupy exactly. yeah. their space. Yeah. Um, but that was a very proud moment to just see them take ownership. That's really where nice. I just sat back, I'm like, ah, you guys are mm. ready. Mm. But it's not something I've publicly mm. said. It's just the vision is beginning to conceptualize. Yeah. And I just need that in the next year and a half, by the time we're doing this big event next year when ten, we're turning 10, yeah. ah, mm. I should have handled the mantle and I'm just really there to oversee. Mm. There needs to be a new CEO. There needs mm. to be a whole team. Mm. I have an incredible team right now. Mm. Our programs manager in Korogosho is a man. Mm. It's an older guy, but he's brilliant. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yeah, there's some pretty mm. decent people who are now mm. part of it. Mm. Just need to strengthen that capacity, mm. streamline the vision, mm. um, solidify the programs. Yeah. That's what we are currently doing. Yeah. So that in a year, mm. um, you know, it's able to run. And mm. that's my biggest joy yeah. is that it outlives me mm -hmm. and that it's led by people. That's Janet amazing. is just somewhere in the background, yeah. okaying yeah. things. Yeah. She's yeah. not being seen. Yeah. yeah. That and and yeah, that's true leadership. But you've slid in something interesting there about the Korogosha Center. Yeah. Talk us to us about that a bit. <laughs> um how did it come to shape and so there's a there was there was a lot of advocacy I do there from as early as 2018, 2019. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there was a need mm -hmm. for like a resource center mm -hmm. from the community, right. at least that they communicated. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then it coincided with a pad making machine also needing a home. Ah. So that's how it came together. Yeah. So it's not to say it has more unique challenges than any other place. Yeah. Yeah. It was just a very organic mm -hmm. fit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's the first one. Mm -hmm. It's very likely that we'll scale to other areas mm -hmm. based on the collaborations mm -hmm. that we're currently in conversation mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. And then there's also, when I was mentioning the intersectionality is about violence, I'm, I'm, you know, like a lot of us, I'm very passionate about, you know, GBV and ending it. There's a safe, there's a safe house we support in Mombasa. Mm. Again, through friendships with a social worker I've known for over a decade, mm. who's done incredible work. Mm. Um, and she started a rescue center mm -hmm. again for victims of GBV. Mm -hmm. And so from 20, I would want to say 19, 2020, mm -hmm. we've been supporting it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, Essentially, we have technically two spaces. One yeah. is in Karagosha, one is in, in Mombasa. Mombasa, where mm -hmm. we're also hoping to equip them with mm -hmm. the capacity to have mm -hmm. some economic empowerment. Mm -hmm. But all of this is a work in progress. Yeah. For now, though, yeah. at least it's able to accommodate yeah. people who are in a lot of danger, mm -hmm. who are very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. They're able to stay there. They're able to get access to justice, mm -hmm. access to psychosocial support. Mm -hmm. They're able to get court dates and mm -hmm. hearings mm -hmm. um, and sometimes be assimilated back into society. So that's mm -hmm. something else that we do. And with um, the amount of things that this is bringing is many because there's an intersectionality. Yeah. Uh, um, menstrual hygiene is just the entry point. Yes. To conversations around sexual reproductive health, teen pregnancy, mm. um, you know, GBV, GBV and finance, many others. Yeah, economic empowerment. Economic yeah. empowerment, rights, rights, you know, rights and justice. Yeah. And how has your own evolution mm. of, of these issues come? Because I don't think any of us has can avoid, um, you know, uh, it's called what bias, mm. um, unconscious bias, unconscious bias, because you know we we are probably nurtured in a particular way, and then the issues are multiple, but the kind of diversity that the book you are launching today, the kind of Jesse that yeah. is, needs to be in place, gender equality, social inclusion, yeah, is is total inclusion. Mm. It, it requires, I think, us all to be on a journey. How has your own journey of evolution around mm. some of these very pregnant issues been? Oh, that's a really good question. I feel like you always have to push yourself to evolve. Mm. You, you have to question your own biases mm -hmm. and say, OK, your privilege bubble has made you see things in this one way. Mm. Um, but the more you interact, the more you engage, the more you begin, if you can allow yourself to, mm is the more you can begin to see, number one, how all these issues technically come back to affect us yeah. in a way, mm -hmm. but also just how you can how you can interrogate and push back on either policies or programs that are not practical. Mm -hmm. So the evolution has just been in the learning mm -hmm. and in the interrogating of the programs mm -hmm. and the policies and in seeing how can we begin to unpack, break down, yeah. relearn, yeah. unlearn mm -hmm. um, as a person, but mm -hmm. also as somebody in the space. Yeah. Um, yeah. Access to justice and psychosocial support is something that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And 
And you're talking about justice across board. Yeah, justice across justice, the board. Justice, yeah, mm. criminal, or yeah. whatever, everything. And a lot of it is justice for survivors of violence, yeah. especially. Mm. Um, so just, and also just evolving to know that the biggest thing that I've been saying lately is there's a lot of progress happening with a lot of persecution and pushback. Mm -hmm. So I'm very alive to, to that, that mm -hmm. every day. I mm -hmm. mention it in every forum. Mm -hmm. I'm like, guys, yeah. we must stay vigilant. Yeah. Some of these tokenistic mm -hmm. moments can really make us excited. Yeah. I just feel like there's such an undercurrent that can just catch us all by surprise. Mm -hmm. And I could only learn that by constantly watching, yeah. learning, mm -hmm. listening, mm -hmm. And evolving being aware, being and conscious. being aware and mm. listening and even listening to the undercurrent mm. seeing how people troll you and mm. kind of reading between the lines mm. it's basically like mm. you talk too much yep. you actually need to be a little bit more quiet yeah. Yeah. i'm like but why is my agency triggering you yeah. and by the time you get into it it's just like but yeah but you're a woman like mm. say less Ooh. and so you realize oh there's still this undercurrent where people who now have a lot of agency mm. people who are in positions of power are just not trying to let let go of those reins. Mm -hmm. So globally, you're seeing a lot of pushback against whether it's um, different groups mm -hmm. having their rights cut off mm. or, or okay. the other day, yeah, mm. or the other day, I think it was in Florida. Mm -hmm. I don't know who finances these people's campaigns, <laughs> but they're all mad. Mm. There's a bill where they want to pass a bill where you can't talk about periods in school. Okay. As, as grade six, as, as when, 10, 11 when year olds. It, when it's time to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not allowed to unless there's somebody. So even if a group of girls are like, oh my gosh, I've just started my period, help me the pad, you can be reprimanded. For me, I'm just like, what is happening? I'm like, guys, are you seeing what's happening? This is, this for me is the ultimate muzzling of agency. It is. And it's getting worse because the progress is also getting louder. Yeah. So I'm in my mind right now, I'm always thinking about how are we protecting agency of children, of women, of girls, because it's being fought a lot. A lot. Yeah. What's your what's your reflection on why the fight is so intense? I think because when you have when you're in a position of power, yeah, and you feel power like it's privilege. being power yeah. and privilege. Mm -hmm. Number one, either you don't see what the big deal is, yeah, or you just don't want to be to let it. To you let don't want to let it go, and you, yeah. you you're, you're seeing mm. this group coming, mm. and instead of seeing it as how do we integrate, mm -hmm. you're seeing it as how do we muzzle. Yeah. But we also how the civil rights movement yeah. ended. Mm. I'm like, imagine eventually, yeah. eventually, yeah. you're gonna have to yield because yeah. you guys tried you, to you muzzle. Come along. Yeah. yeah, you tried to muzzle until there was this massive movement. Mm. That's how independence was made in Africa. Everyone yeah. just rose up. Yeah. That's how the civil rights movement yeah. broke through yeah. in the US. And mm. I'm like, I feel like we're going through another chapter. Mm. I just think we need to be as bold. Mm. And I just don't know that we're as unified and as bold. I think mm. we're all saying too many things at the same time. Mm. But what's our unified message? And mm. our unified message should be, we want everyone to have access to yeah. rights. Yeah. But right now, there's, it's easy to divide because yeah. there's many different conversation points. Mm. Mm. There needs to be a groundswell yeah. of mobilization yeah. loud enough that nobody has a choice but to listen and be like, okay, fine. You're speaking very much movement building language yes. because that's how it starts. You know, the, 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 we begin with this groundswell, yeah. we get to a peak or a moment. Yeah. I think there's probably more, I, I keep saying more movements are about particular moments. Yes, Those they are. moments will get us into motion. And I think a reflection that you've shared that is super amazing mm -hmm. is that there's too many of us saying yeah. too many things, yes. but in an uncoordinated way. Yes. And probably the, that's also an issue around power again, uh, you know, because I want to maintain my little corner and attract. But the more we speak, we, the more we try to speak together, because all these issues are together. We, yeah. we, we, we cannot. Justice is only justice if all people who deserve justice have justice. Yeah, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So even though. I feel like one of the last times there was massive coordination was the Beijing Declaration in 1995. Because oh, yeah. ah. everyone was just like, hey, yeah, we want to go moment. to school, we want to go to work. Yeah. And then, you know, 26 yeah. or 27 years that's later. That's a lot of time. I mean, a long time ago. Yeah, but, they, have, mm -hmm. but they made some yeah. significant progress because yeah. they all descended on this mm -hmm. one area and mm -hmm. said, this is what mm -hmm. we want. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. I just feel like we've lost that. Also, you know, there's a lot of complaints, for example, that the feminist movement is also divided among like race mm. and class and yeah. all these things. Yeah, yeah. I also think that we need to, the people most affected have to have the loudest voices. 
which is not the easiest thing. It's not. Because there's a lot of classism. Yeah. You know, we haven't mutualized and localized the conversation. I'm too. always like, why it's, are you talking for people you... So you let them talk, like, yeah. let yeah. them... Mm. And again, it's a power thing, you're right, yeah. actually. It's mm. about, will they infringe on... I, I just, I don't anymore know how to. That's mm. why whenever I'm on a panel, mm. I ask, can I bring someone mm. who can talk about their lived yeah. experience? Mm. I don't want to talk for them anymore. Yeah. And there's kind of a fear or a concern, but I'm saying, but they are, I liked what happened today at, at Jesse. It was one of the forums where you really saw the people who are featured in the report were the ones in the room. Mm. So it had persons with disability, it had youth, it had, you know, LGBT, it had, um, it had um, survivors of FGM and child marriage, but they were mm. the ones mm. who were responding to the report. Absolutely. A week or two ago, mm. I had a conversation through Equality Now, mm -hmm. interviewing and moderating survivors of FGM and child marriage mm. who were in the same room as duty bearers, which mm. all the duty bearers, almost all of them say, this is the first time I've ever been in a room with the people I actually look after. But they were like, we've never heard them. We've never heard them. And there was a lot of build up to that moment. What yeah. I like about how Equality Now did it was there was a lot of psychosocial support for mm. them. Mm. So they were sitting in a circle, but in between they had counselors. Yeah. Because they all broke down. Oh we God. all broke down. Yeah. It was the most heavy, yeah. it was one of the heaviest things I've ever done. Because they were talking about their stories mm. and they were talking about, I was nine years old and I was cut and then I was married three weeks later. I mean, really raw. But in that, you get all the glaring gaps. Mm. And then the duty bearers now, mm. we were like, okay, but where are we dropping the ball? Mm. And so there was a little bit of back and forth to try mm. and figure out a middle ground. But at mm. the end of the day, everybody just wanted progress. Mm. But I was just like, I'm just glad that you gave them. Mm. So I think moving forward, the two things that need to happen is your point about a coordinated mm. message mm. and also putting those most affected at the front lines. Yeah. Just give them the capacity to express what they're saying. Mm. Otherwise, and everyone always says the same thing. Mm. This thing of taking us to expensive hotels <laughs> when you need to bring it to where we are. So yeah. we need to listen. Yeah. We need to just provide the platforms and yeah. convenings and the, and the support. And step back. And step back. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, just I, step I think back. researchers, educators, people with power generally, you mm. know, people who are able to translate even the lingo and mm -hmm. everything. One of the things I've made as a, as a rule, uh, not as a rule, as a practice that we are mm. trying, is we do support, you know, um, a strategy development, research, evaluations. But one of the things that we often put at the front is that we don't want to be the only ones who are signing as the researchers. Mm. We want the people who, who, who are affected to actually have their names featured here. There you go. You may not have your PhD, you may not have your, you may not be doctoral, mm. you may not be the researcher, but you're the lived experience. You are, we are researching with you on the ground every single day. Papers should be, you know, having your name and that's a way of building, yeah. uh, building capacity, building agency, yeah. so that guys know, yeah, I, I published this thing. You know, I'm a co-author in this that. very particular thing. Yeah. Um, especially on these su subject matter issues that are, that are, you know, pre pretty delicate. Mm. But on the other side, you've also been moderating quite <laughs> a bit. Yeah. You know, and you, you had this, um, uh, you, what's the word that we use? Not claimed, but yeah. The you, manifestation. You manifested for... <laughs> Let me tell you, I yes. manifested. I was just like, five years. Yeah. But I put in the work. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> tell us it. about the work uh, yeah. uh, that you put in even before that happened. Where did you moderate? What were your experiences? How is it moderating, moderating extremes of extremes? Especially yeah. Because that's what a moderator is supposed to do. So moderating in many ways is an extension, I think, of the work I did. And mm -hmm. it's important to recognize that that I didn't just wake up and to, be this moderator. No, you take the skill sets of the interviews you do on set and yeah. the conversations. That, I was a moderator on my own talk show, so to speak, for five sure, years. Sure, sure. Um, and Monday Special was generally about moderating. Yeah. There was always what I would call the case study or the storyteller mm -hmm. and the expert mm -hmm. and the audience. Mm -hmm. So I was always moderating. Mm -hmm. And so that skill, and I think that's why you find a lot of moderators and mm -hmm. MCs are people from, from media. media or newsroom, mm -hmm. because it's an extension of what we do. Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, learning new spaces, development, corporate, yeah, yeah. that's where the challenge is mm. and trying to navigate. Mm -hmm. And so over the years, it's just learning, number one, what is important mm -hmm. to me, but also what's important to the client. Mm. So for me, it's things like information sharing done mm. early enough, mm -hmm. a conversation with the client, mm. notes, briefing notes, mm. 
call time, make sure everybody's mm. on time, having a contact. Mm -hmm. I'm very pedantic. I'm mm. kind of like an mm. army general mm. when I'm doing yeah. this. So I'm like, I need a list of protocols. Yeah. I need somebody on site with me at this time. Yeah. And if I have any issue, who's going to be there? Fantastic. But in a way that's respectful and... Yeah. Yeah, you do have your Mariah Carey list. <laughs> <laughs> My, what is it called? There's um, a name for... There is a name. There's a name. For, there's a name for... When artists call a, for yeah, this thing. Ride, not uh, riders. Riders. It's no, a ride. No, it's something. It's that, something. It's yeah. something along those lines. Yeah. Um, I do have requests in terms your of information. Yeah. Um, what's going to be on site? Mm. Is there a podium? Is mm. there... So I also tend to get to venues at least two and a half hours before an event starts. I've witnessed that. Yeah, yeah mm. if an event starts at eight, I'll be there at 6 a.m. Mm. Mm. If I have to. Mm. Another great thing about being a journalist in a newsroom, you can have us there at any time. You want us to be there at three in the mm. morning, mm. Sawa, and we don't flinch because mm. you're used to all these weird mm. hours. Mm. So I remember people would come and be like, you've you're been here since it. what time? And mm. I said, yeah, but this, our training, you're like a doctor. Yeah. Anytime you're on call. Mm. So that also helps mm. is the discipline to know mm. what time do you need to be there. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot of discipline. Mm. And I think I'm very grateful mm. that I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. And that it, for many people, it comes down to mm. she's reliable, mm. she's disciplined, mm. she shows up on mm. time. Mm. Um, I think there's a time I felt like I was taking on too much. And what mm. that can do mm. is you're a bit edgy and maybe just not. That was 20, I think 2021. Mm. Okay. I was just doing the most. Mm. So now I try to pick mm. Um, panels that I'm really passionate about. Mm -hmm. So I lead with passion. Mm -hmm. Jesse was great because I'm yeah. like, oh, it's gender equality, social inclusion, yeah. I'm in. Yeah. There's one I'm doing in a week mm -hmm. that's also going to be uh, the launch of a report. Mm. But I spread it out now mm. because mm. then I'm able to prepare better. Mm. You know, so mm. you also learn. The mm. more you do something, mm. the more you learn what works for you, mm. what works for a client. Mm. Mm. I also like including social media as a value add. So yeah. I tell them, I'd love to amplify this. Mm. Do you have a social media toolkit or mm. hashtags? Mm. And so it's a craft. It's like mm. any other. If mm. you're, if you're, whether you're in football, Formula One, mm. cooking, mm. the more you do something, the more you learn, the more you get better at it. But mm. you never stop learning, mm. ever. Mm. And I never stop getting nervous. Mm. And I was told the day you stop getting nervous, You've you know who told me that was Beatrice Marshall, because oh. you know there was that clock, the clock mm. that goes on air before news. Night, I say that the, clock is the last, anxiety. The, for, the, yeah, the last minute. 8.59 and you then... You feel like you're going to cry. <laughs> it just starts, you're like, the clock is on air. Yeah. I'm on <laughs> Your air tummy anyway. gets so... Yeah, but... And well she told done. me, good, mm. that should never go away. Mm. And it never has. Mm. When I know an event is starting, mm -hmm. um, and I know we have five minutes, mm -hmm. and I make the announcement to say, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting in five mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. I just need to breathe and center myself mm -hmm. before I go mm -hmm. and begin. So, so moderating takes that. And you become quite... We're extremely good at it, but then ha have you worked with like a set of particular clients that you feel mm. um, I've seen you at an AMREF event? Yes, uh, yes, I've, yes, yes. Um, like, who, who are some of the clients that you feel you have this vibe and connection ah. and the issues that they're doing with? This is a moment to with. shout them out. Let's shout them up <laughs> yeah. also as we talk about the issues that you know, mm. because. I'm sure you also don't say yes to everything. No. You know, there's got to be like, what are your, what's your no go zone, mm. you know, when it comes to. You want you needed a moderator, but the issues that you're dealing with yeah. are, are not, you know, connecting and with me. If I just don't feel like it's a topic that I either have interest or expertise in, mm. I'm always quick to recommend someone. Mm. If somebody says, Oh, we're launching this, maybe it's very heavy on corporate, I'm like, Oh, I know a great business MC. Mm. Why don't you call them? Mm. I'm very quick to do that mm -hmm. nowadays because mm. I'm like, no, we're many in yeah. the space and yeah. they're so good. Mm. In fact, I remember somebody telling me the other day, you're so quick to recommend. I'm like, yeah, because we're many. Mm. People always feel like there's mm. a Yeah. The cake is large enough. The cake is to, large enough, to, and there's yeah. so many incredible people. Mm -hmm. So I mm -hmm. usually give recommendations. So for me, it's, if it's a topic that I'm not very... Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know. Agriculture is something we all know, mm -hmm. but I may not be an expert. The nuances around it. The is, nuances around yeah. it, I'm like, I can do it, sour, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I feel like there's somebody else who can do a better mm -hmm. job. Mm -hmm. Why don't you ask them? Unless they feel like there's an intersectionality between mm -hmm. agriculture and gender, yeah. then I'll ask them to brief me. Mm -hmm. We'll have a conversation. I'll be like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. then I'll agree. That's mm -hmm. if they insist, like, mm -hmm. no, Janet, we'd like you. Mm -hmm. If they don't insist, I'll say, can I recommend one, two, three people? Mm -hmm. I'll call those people, mm -hmm. ask them, can I give your name and number? Mm -hmm. um, the organizations that I feel I vibe with are equality now, mm -hmm. I feel like they are very in tune. Yeah with what is happening. Yeah. The, now they've become very survivor-centered. Mm -hmm. I'm like, very few people do what you guys do. Mm -hmm. Go Going out of your way mm -hmm. to go to, to figure out and strengthen referral pathways. Mm -hmm. So you're strengthening the capacity of centers that are accommodating or hosting survivors, yeah. counseling them mm -hmm. enough to even come and share their stories Look and them. make them the mm -hmm. people who speak. Mm -hmm. um, 
So I just, I love working with them. Amplifying those voices That's, completely. They're, they're very good at doing issues. that. Yeah. yeah. So I know we're going to do a series of conversations with them mm. this year. We started in a big way in 2021 mm -hmm. and we kind of haven't Continued, stopped. So yeah. mm. Generation Equality Forum, right. also 2021. Yeah. Yeah. They were marking 25 years since Beijing. Mm. And we're still in conversation with mm -hmm. them. Mm. So they're another one. Mm. Um, Amref, mm. obviously. Yeah. Um, I just love how Afro-centered um, <laughs> Amref is. Yeah, makes me so, you know, about our issues and yeah. about our solutions. Mm. So then, mm. even lately, people like UNESCO and UN Women, mm. and again, with organizations like that, it really kind of depends on the tone or the head of the, the mm. country representative mm. at the time, mm. and maybe the outlook and strategy. Mm. Mm. I don't know, because... Yeah we're interacting mm -hmm. quite a bit now. In fact, one mm -hmm. of the events I'm doing in a week or two is with them. Mm -hmm. So I'm finding like we have a rapport mm -hmm. and UNESCO as well. Mm -hmm. So those are the ones. And the issues I can tell You can from, see the, the reproductive the health and rights, yeah. gender, yeah. economic empowerment, yeah. and survivors and storytelling. Yeah. yeah. But it become also very fine in those issues. I mean, both partly mm -hmm. due to your work with Inwadada and, yeah. and the collaborations and conversations, but also partly because if you're on a panel, you you have to you have to at least be able to hold your and, own yeah sink in and um and sp who are some of the people that you've been in a panel with and then you feel like i'm so grateful outside of um mm. the survivors of particular issues yeah uh in terms of like experts and others yeah mm -hmm. so sometimes i always tell people i keep reminding them i'm not an expert i can just share i i can talk about what i'm feeling and seeing yeah i'm sorry how many times has this alarm Take a shot every time my alarm goes off. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, this is not my brand, guys. It's just that it's a busy day. Yeah. No, it's good. So I'm it's... setting it for another 20 minutes because I feel like you guys will keep me here till midnight. No, 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 no. We, we are doing well with I time. just have so a fun. feeling till midnight. <laughs> and then I'll need a room. But we move and pick. We can make a plan. Yeah. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. Yeah. Um, panelist oh my gosh you know what mm. there's some there's some sessions i've moderated yeah and been take there's one i did with chimamanda look at that you know i don't think she knows what she's done to a lot of us ah. she's just iconic yeah so it was chogam she's iconic for both female, female and men just for the continent yeah, yeah, she's an she african is. giant yeah. yeah but i like her because she's a storyteller feminist but she she breaks it down. She's I conscious. like people who break yeah. down yeah. the technical yeah. issues and the technical yeah. speak. Mm. I'm, I'm a lot on panels with technical mm. speakers, mm. and I try to break down what they're saying. Yeah. In, in issues, in matters like that, I don't mind moderating, because mm -hmm. then I can ask the question and you'll answer it how you're comfortable, mm. even though sometimes mm. you may or may not lose me. Mm. A lot more now I understand, mm. obviously. <laughs> but it's that those are the times when i feel like i don't know what this person just said yeah they used very big technical words when and, all they were trying to say and acronyms and, and acronyms and stuff yeah so and that's what people like equality now for me get mm. right is even mm. when they start that way they'll mm. take the feedback yeah and what i've also started doing with organizations mm. is invited them mm. to say to be like why don't you just give me a capacity building mm. session yeah which they also like i'm like oh. let's do a one hour call mm. where you walk me through the report mm -hmm. break down the acronym so mm. that i'm better Aware. able to yeah. amplify it and disseminate yeah. it. I yeah. even re requested that with Jesse. I'm like, mm. why don't you host a capacity building for amplifiers? Mm. You can have 10 of us mm -hmm. and just get us to understand how we can break down mm. and up. So they say that's a brilliant idea. And I love the word you're using, amplifiers. Yes, not, not influencers. Not influencers. Oh. And as much as I know I'm kind of one, I, I struggle a bit with the word. Yeah. Also, the connotation. It's been misused. Yeah. It's been misused. Mm. So, I'm an amplifier. Yeah. I, if it's okay if people say influencer. Yeah. I'll take it, but Kwambali. No, run with <laughs> amplifier is good because that's what you're doing. Yeah. What you told me, even when we met and said, I would love to amplify what you guys are doing. Yeah. I was like, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, and oh I know. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> so, so, those are some of the. So, with her, it was Chogam, it had, it had Chimamanda, it had Melinda Gates. Mm. ICPD, mm. I believe ICPD. The Nairobi one? The Nairobi one. Yeah. ICPD 25, 2019 mm -hmm. changed my moderating mm. career. Oh, I should have mentioned that. Yeah. Um, because I started moderating and emceeing out yeah. of Citizen, mm. so 2017, 2018. Mm -hmm. What was different about ICPD, mm -hmm. um, it was this global conference taking place in Kenya. Mm. So it was bringing together all these global players. Mm heads of state. And again, I have this thing where the less I know, yeah. the better in the beginning. Mm. So again... Oh, so, so that you go in with your curiosity. There you go. You're a willing listener. You want to learn as everyone else who is... There you go. And also, mm. the pressure of now later knowing all the heads of state that were coming. Yeah. Sijiwich princess. Mm. Crown princess of oh Denmark. I'm like, there's a princess mm. coming. Mm. Mm. 
so that's when I learned, yeah, Kenya is the co-host mm. with Denmark and yeah. UNFPA. Yeah. That was a big moment in Kenya. It was so big. Yeah, and yeah. myself and John C. Biokumu, yeah. I love that the organizers fought for us because they were trying to bring moderators from outside. Yeah. But they fought for Kenyans to, to moderate this event which was happening in Kenya. Can I ask a political question okay. as you continue your story? Do mm. you think, I mean, that happened in, um, in the previous regime. Um, the, the, there are regimes that particular circumstances can 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 move. Mm. Um, what's your political answer to that? <laughs> hey, I have no political. <laughs> no, in because, terms of hosting ICPD. Yeah, in terms oh, of hosting because ICPD, because of the subject Kenya, matter. The subject matter was, you know, I, yeah, I, I, reproductive health. Reproduct but that's a, that's a one of the biggest moments in Kenya. Do you think mm -hmm. the previous regime, you know, naturally would have allowed for that? or the current regime? I mean, mm. can we in the next five years as a country be Do able to Do another ICPD? Yeah. That's, this is why the groundswell is needed. Yeah. I think so. And mm. I only say that because, I mean, it's what, six, seven months yeah. since. Um, yeah. So it's early days, mm -hmm. but, there's also, but there's already quite a bit of, um, of strong linkages or bonds happening with development partners and very international. Very interesting ones, as a matter of fact. Very interesting mm. ones. So mm. that, inform some of the agendas that mm. may be prioritized. Mm. It also needs to be coupled with a lot of the data and showcase mm. that, hey, we need to reflect on 30 years of ICPD mm. because we are in the top five countries that are struggling with teen pregnancy. Yep. Let's talk about how to bring those numbers exactly. down. For that reason, I think so. Mm. I mm. think some of the in, inner conversations, mm -hmm. just like it happened last time, yeah. people were trying to make it about, oh, oh you yeah. people want yeah. to do this and yeah, that yeah. and say A, B, yeah. C, D. Yeah, there, there was still a strong Pushback. O pushback and opposition. opposition we yeah. call it opposition, but it's opposition also from the other side. Yeah, so it's, it's exactly. Really funny. <laughs> but yet we still did it. Yeah, it, it uh, still happened. It and still it was commi serious commitments were made yes. that, you know, now there's need to... To uh, implement follow and follow yeah. through. But ICPD was big because of the... Uh, I think that space allowed me to kind of take my moderating career to the next, the next level because mm -hmm. not only was i emceeing mm. with john cb mm -hmm. i moderated a panel that had mm. literally global yeah global voices it's so the melinda gates one? melinda gates mm -hmm. was on the my first panel mm. there was um now surely this is the problem with trying to name drop name and then drop not name drop a, oh, they're, they're, there was an <laughs> there was an activist who um is a global activist for women she's based out of egypt but she's global yeah a youth activist mm -hmm. and um so it was a very global moment mm, mm. and I thoroughly enjoyed the mm, conversation mm, mm, mm. and then in the room because of people who are in the room mm -hmm. it became hey mm. could you do this for me mm. so that and the funny thing is I really enjoyed ICPD mm. and I thank mm. God that I just threw myself into, into it, it without thinking about who's in the room yeah I was just committed to what are we talking about mm. how are we going to make sure we sustain this mm -hmm. and as a result I've been able to host events in different parts of the world in mm. different parts of the country mm. and the continent based on people picking up on, oh, she wants to, she's able to hold her own. Yeah, yeah. And I don't take that for granted. Mm. You can't take it for, mm. and it doesn't mean I've had bad yeah. MC and moderating days. I mm. have, you just mm. have them <laughs> and you pick yourself up and say, do mm. better. Maybe sometimes you mix up mm. the order yeah. or you miss out on somebody's name. Those things get to me so badly, mm. but they mm. happen. Mm. And I say, okay, do better. Mm. Next time, pay attention. Mm. You miss, and a lot of the time it's when things haven't been organized too well mm. and there's chaos mm. and I get caught up in the chaos. Mm. And I think that's why I said, I'm going to scale back mm. so that I know that mm. I'm working with people who mm. are big on mm. attention to mm. detail. What's your bandwidth like for moderation? Can you, or like, like, like what's the, in 2021 when you had to, Take this moment and say i need to yeah back. how did that look like was it monthly weekly it was weekly oh my goodness and i'm like i don't know what i'm doing with my life so this doesn't need to be my life oh wow and then i started picking conversations that number one i'm really passionate about yeah. but that have more are more dynamic mm -hmm. have a lot more weight mm. and i just maybe better organized mm. also because i'm a mom of two young mm. boys and mm. i'm not trying to spend time away from them mm. Mm. so i just balanced in okay this conversation makes sense mm, to me mm. it makes sense to the work i'm doing the work i'm passionate about mm. and i and i like the work this organization mm, is doing mm. it's pretty much maybe the same way somebody would pick i don't know whether it's the same as how a musician would pick how many tours to do yeah. anymore yeah. it's similar it it's is. like i don't need to mm. do another mm. world tour mm. i don't need to put out an album every month mm. i can just mm. do an album a year so mm. it's the same thing and for you it's also because some of them require you to actually be physically present in some in some in some places yeah like last year i was in new york and then germany and then new york again yeah so you have to think of the bandwidth for travel yeah for prep yeah and navigating a new country yeah. new city knowing yeah. being on top of your content yeah. 
Um, and again, those are things that I'm really grateful for mm. because it also stretches your ability to host mm. in new spaces mm. where people don't necessarily look or sound like you, but yeah. you're still there. Yeah. And if you're invited, show up. Mm. Um, and I'm very, very big on showing up. Mm. It's something that I insist on. Mm. I'm like, I'm going to show up mm. until I can't. Mm. So that's how I choose it. Just more like how people choose what to scale back on. As authors or singers, it's the same mm. way. Mm. Is you pick a good concert to do. Yeah. If somebody says, I'm only going to do Glastonbury, mm. or I'm only going to do Madison Square, yeah. it's the same thing where you say, I'm going to do six yeah. key events this year. Yeah or one event a month or two a month. Mm. And then, yeah, so maybe... Does the rate card play into yes, this also? also. Yeah. Also, mm -hmm. because <laughs> you also don't want to burn out yeah. and you feel like you're, you're going out of pocket, yeah. burning out. Yeah. So you just become smarter yeah. about it and say, mm. some of them I'll do maybe mm. out of mm. passion and honorarium mm. and say, it's okay, this one mm. I'm collaborating as mm. a partner. Mm. Otherwise, I charge. And I mm. always tell development people, that's why when I say I sit on the fence of, development influencer amplifier, mm -hmm. I also tell my people, I'm like, yeah. guys, yeah. you can't do this thing where you say you don't have budget. Mm. Dig into that budget for how you put flowers yep. in the room yep. and put it to yeah. the person. Because exactly. I always tell people it costs to show up. Mm. For me to show up, 20K. Mm. Literally, mm. hair, makeup, styling, and fuel, mm. 20K. Mm. So I always tell people mm. it costs for us to, to show, show up. up. And you want us to show up as we are. Mm looking the way we do with mm. how we're dressed because mm -hmm. that's our brand and mm. that's what makes you come back for mm. us but you're not willing to pay mm. so i fight i push mm. back mm. i also tell my people now like hey they don't have budget for brands yeah. guys yeah. so where is that middle ground yeah. and i'm i'm really happy to mm. see a lot more partners reaching a middle ground mm. they're starting to understand especially in the dev space right yes mm. they're starting to understand mm. it they're just mm. like mm. it's not what it was before yeah. and yeah. you can't take advantage yeah. The other day, somebody said, oh, do this Instagram video. I said, no, I'll do a story. Mm. You want me to do a video? Mm. You're going to pay me. Mm. See if they are quiet. Mm -hmm. I've not heard from them again. <laughs> but I'm becoming a lot more confident about mm. it because mm. you can't just wake up and demand yep. things. Because yep. um, you've also spent time building that brand. Yeah. Tr time. I mean, I, I think one of your pages somehow, mm. Mm. what happened? I think your Instagram page, Kitambo. Oh, Twitter. Yeah, Twitter. Disappeared. I don't, yeah. I, I forgot. It's very embarrassing. I just don't remember how I was locked out of it. Password? Right. Yeah, I know. You forgot but I'm password? temporarily yeah. off Twitter. Like, I, I, I've disabled for a bit. Okay. I'm now, my like Inuadada and my first time are the ones I want to drive. Okay. I don't have anything to say on Twitter uh, right now. <laughs> okay. I'm protecting my peace. I get but you, I still yeah. follow Twitter every day. Mm. I see what's trending. Mm. I participate. Mm. I just don't have anything to say right now. Yeah. I yeah. really enjoy Instagram, yeah. LinkedIn. Yeah. Facebook, I know there's a lot of special people on Facebook, <laughs> but I love my fans. I'm almost at 400K now, so oh. I've got to love them anyway. Yeah. And there's, you know, I have a good community. Mm, mm. Like I genuinely have a really good community mm, of followers. Mm. They, they either check me when mm. I need to be checked mm -hmm. or they support or mm. I don't know. Mm. I just, I always shout them out nowadays. What's your relationship with them? How do you cultivate um, a win-win mm. relationship with like an audience of this nature? I feel like a lot of them say you stayed the same. Like yeah. you, you've stayed the same thing for five years. And so we are... Like we vibe because you haven't changed your tune. Ah, you're and I don't, consistent. Yeah, I'm consistent. So mm. they say that things like around consistency. Mm. I think it helps them know how to follow a journey. And it's consistent consistency around the issues. Around the yeah, I think so. But I always things. tell people I can surprise you. Tomorrow I might show up in a bikini. So just be ready. I'm oh, not saying I will. We are going to look for <laughs> I did in 2021. Yeah. I was at the beach and I'm just like I didn't expect it to be. I'm like, anyway, guys, mm. I'm also human. I was on the beach. I don't know what you wanted me to wear. I'm a mother. And it was just like, cover yourself. Oh, dear. If you were my, it was very weird. Yeah. It really shows you mm. how people want to own you. Mm. But I don't take it lightly anymore. I don't trolling and digital security as a, a, as a woman and just as a human. You know, things like block were invented for a reason. Yeah. If you want to protect your peace, use yeah. the features. Block. <laughs> block. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's not, uh, it's not a I flex. It's just if somebody is insulting or infringing yeah they don't have to be part of your space mm. so become generous with it mm. not because they said something you don't like but mm. because they were weird about it mm. however like i said i thank god my space has been pretty good mm. um 2015 when i was pregnant with huru on tv mm. i got a lot of body shaming it really? was so weird mm. it was a lot of it was from men they'd say things like you're too pregnant to be on tv like so i remember asking guys explain to me what too pregnant means but then that's when i knew i'm an activist because I, it was the first time I think mm -hmm. I ever really pushed back mm. to a point where it became a story. Mm. Literally, it was on the trend. It was mm. on True Love. It was on Kiss. It mm. was on a classic. Mm -hmm. 
um, I don't know why it was a story. Mm. I've grown up a bit liberal, mm. so things like being pregnant on air is no biggie. Yeah. But I realized it's an exception, mm. not the norm. Mm. I've had to realize a lot of things it's I've experienced. Most are exceptions. I've been, you know, you've been fortunate enough yeah. to be in a space. Mm. I, things like sexism and all, I mm. only learned much later mm. because I'd grown up just not seeing barriers yeah. at all to race, to religion, to mm. Mm. Eh, until character development takes place. Mm. So I was really body shamed. Mm -hmm. But I pushed back, I fought mm, back, mm. I told people, you really don't have to watch me. Mm. I don't. And then I started saying, you know, you realize you've insulted mothers. And mm. some of them actually apologized. Mm. I'm like, what are you saying? Mm. Also, I'm pregnant, I'm not sick, I'm not. Yeah. But it was a really big body shaming. And mm. I've talked about this in so many platforms, mm -hmm. how that was my first experience with mm. trolling mm. was because I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. But I pushed back because I know I was pushing back for many women. Yeah. Um, and that's happened many times. Also, if you're in activism, mm. you will be trolled. You'll mm. be told, mm. you, yeah. I don't know. That's why you don't have a man, whatever it is they say. Mm. But progress comes with persecution. Yeah. So you have to kind of expect mm. it. Just protect your peace. Mm. If somebody wants to have a healthy conversation, mm. let's have a healthy conversation. Mm. If you want to insult, you just have to get off my space. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll be like, oh, these guys have all these features. Mm. Just use them. Mm. And I don't blink. Mm. Um, and it constantly evolves. You don't mm. know what your state of mind will be mm. next year. Yeah. So whatever protects your peace, do mm. it. Mm. So the community I have are largely amazing. Mm. Um, they like to engage on issues. Mm. They like to make me aware of things that are happening. Um, or they also like style and fashion, which I do, yeah. or makeup or whatever it is. Yeah. So we enjoy, I enjoy the yeah. space. There is, there's, there's, there's a community. There's a community. And created. I always say, I really love my yeah. community. I enjoy yeah. you guys. Yeah. And they've, I'm not here alone. I'm here because of my community. Do you do your community management yourself? Or yeah, you especially for team? Instagram. I'm very like, don't touch my Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> also because it's 1.3 million followers. Oh yeah. I'm not trying to say something yeah. weird. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, don't touch. Yeah. Don't breathe near my yes. my settings. Yeah. Let me handle this. Yeah. I also take social media breaks yeah. effortlessly. All right. I can go off for as long as I need to. So I normally take two breaks a year mm -hmm. in August mm -hmm. and December so mm -hmm. that I can really be present with my sons mm -hmm. during the school holidays. Mm -hmm. Last year I didn't because I had brand engagements. Mm. I wouldn't do that this time. I'm mm. just, I, after Jamhuri Day, you won't mm. find me until New Year's. Mm. Even then you'll be lucky. Mm. I'll probably come back for my birthday, mm. which is January 11th. 11, yeah. So you cultivate the relationship you want for your peace of mind. Mm. I recognize not everyone can do that. For a lot of people, it's a payday. Mm. Yeah. But I think when you've built yourself enough to, to, to be able to know what works and what doesn't, mm then you can also allow yourself the grace yeah. to deal with how you deal with things best. Mm. I've gone through very public things that are not great, yeah. beyond my control. Yeah. Um, and Literally beyond your control. Literally. Yeah. You wake up and you're like, oh, wow, yeah, trending for a week. Okay, way. interesting. Mm. Mm. So you learn to be very, you ask yourself what's important. Mm. I'm like, you have to be mm. in a good place because mm. you have two sons mm. who are young mm. who need mom to be in a good mm -hmm. place. But you also need to be a good place for you. Okay, yeah. so what measures do you need to take in mm -hmm. place? And for you, what, that, what, what is that? Yeah, so for me, it's do I need to take a break? I'll take a break. Yeah. Um, I'll even let clients know like, mm. hey, I know you want to engage with me. I'm not on social media for three weeks. Mm. So either you can be okay with that or mm. wait until mm. that time comes. Mm. Mm. And this is how you begin to build even your solid client base. Yeah. They don't mind. They're yeah. like, take all the time you yeah. need. We will see you. We'll after. see you. at Yeah. Mm. So you, mm. you, you also prioritize. My yeah. priorities are things around my faith. I'm also trying to strengthen my journey with my faith, mm -hmm. my family, and just my... And for faith, like what does that look like? And then we can discuss family a bit. I think just, <coughs> I think just harnessing a very personal relationship with God mm. and just knowing that whether I'm doing something that I feel is shameful or wrong or thinking, thinking things that I shouldn't, yeah. I'm including God in it. I'm mm. like, you, you designed me. Mm. So you know, you know me. You know me. me so way. let's <laughs> walk together because yeah. things are thick or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, true. But I'm enjoying it mm. because I'm finding there's an, a very peaceful, mm. organic relationship. Also, when things seem like they're too much, mm. I feel like there's a reason for it. So mm. I stay grounded in saying, mm. this is your journey. Mm. And this is your <coughs> opportunity to not lose faith, mm. but to actually draw closer. Mm. So it's still, there's still room for growth and yeah. improvement. But mm. I like that I'm being intentional I'm about being keeping about, yeah. you know, God close. Mm. Family is huge for me. Oh. Mm. Are we okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. so, um, family, you mm. know, like I said, my mm. sons are seven and four. Mm. Um, How is it being a mother of sons? Mm. I think God gives you what you, you're supposed to do. So mm. I love it. Mm. I really love it. They're like my little buddies. Mm. But they're also at that stage where they really push boundaries and all. So we either have tough conversations or conversations mm. like adults. Mm. Um, I communicate to them, I think, in a way that 
they're able to also express what they're feeling. So mm -hmm. I've always told them things like if anybody says or does something that mm -hmm. makes you uncomfortable, speak up. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling upset, use mm -hmm. your words. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can be temperamental. I'm like, say, I told you, use your words. Mm -hmm. um, it's a privilege to be their mom. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm always saying mm -hmm. I'm, I'm so lucky to have them. Mm -hmm. And I try to integrate them into my life mm -hmm. so that I don't have too many separate lives. Mm -hmm. There's times I've taken them to meetings. Mm -hmm. So oh, you, if you see me, mm. if you see me saying, let's meet at Sarit Pins. Yeah. Oh, that is because there's a few a people day. who are like, why are we here? I'm yeah. like, because there's a playground there. Yeah. Yeah. So I try to do that yeah. when I need to spend time with yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so it's, yeah. it's an honor. Parenting is hard and it's important that we recognize. Yeah. But I remember I was once told it's hard if you're doing it right. And mm. I made, and I was just like, oh. ah, then I'm fine. Yeah. Yeah. So I normally try and encourage mm. people and say, it's hard mm. if you're doing it right, because mm. it just means you care about you care. You being, care enough. you care enough that yeah. it's hard. Mm. We don't like saying it's hard. Mm. Ah, I'm the first mm. person to be like, it mm. is hard. Mm. But mm. it's okay that you mm. admit that because mm. it's two humans and you need to mm. show them mm. love and be mm. there for them. Mm. But I just, I just wouldn't have it any other way. Mm. I genuinely, I'm just kind of smitten by them. Is it harder? Um, in your context, maybe how erratic my schedule yeah. is. Yeah, but also the collaboration to yeah. parent. Fuck you. No, You're such just, a journalist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. I, I'm, I'm I curious. can see you and, digging, and, and, and so are many viewers. I just, I will be able to have an answer for that in a few months. Okay. Yeah. All right. But mm. yeah, but. <laughs> I want to give those generic answers like we thank God. We thank God. Yeah, God has been faithful. God has been faithful. <laughs> that is my you. answer. He has hey, been faithful. God has that. My answer is God has been he faithful. He has been faithful. God yeah. has been faithful. Yeah. So, but the boys are growing. They're growing, mm. and my life is also strange. You know, mm. there's times when I'm doing events, and sometimes I do my own makeup, sometimes I don't. So what they've seen mm. is it's hair and makeup, glam yeah. squad. Yeah. <laughs> so they just know my mom. She wears makeup and then she goes on stage. <laughs> but, but that's their normal. Yeah. Or we're walking in a mall and you'll hear, hi, Mali, hi, Huru. Yeah. So they, then Huru has to explain to Mali, it's because mom was on TV, she's yeah. on social media, that's yeah. why people know her. Yeah. So it's, their life is also a little different. Yeah. Because you have somebody who's kind of a public figure, mm -hmm. but I keep telling them, but that's their normal. Mm -hmm. And you try to make it as normal for them. Yeah. And you can't take it away from them. At no. times we try to uh, uh, yeah. manage it. Oh, I don't. Yet it is their life. Oh, I really just, yeah. I really try and show them that this mm. is, this is who we are. This is mm. who I am. Mm. Um, and half the time, I don't know if you feel the same way yeah. as a parent, but sometimes you don't know what you're doing. Uh, all the time. <laughs> all the time. And then I think I've been telling myself is that uh, our children are 11. We have not had the children who are 11 before. That's true. So we are zero years of experience at, at this age. Day. And so they're also zero years ex of experience at the age they are. So we're yeah. all learning. I love that. So we make mistakes yeah. together, but we learn. But we are quick to admit. Yeah. No, none of us has more experience other than, you know, what you've had with your child. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I like that. It's, it's, it's what you know. Mm. And so I'm like, I do what I know. And... I, I just try to make them open mm. about what a youth feel. Mm. The young one doesn't, he has no filter. Yeah, oh. He doesn't need help in being open. Oh, yeah. And then I teach, now you think, because you're an activist, you teach them things like consent. Yeah. And it's funny because the other day, something small, like I tried to dip my chip in his sauce and he's mm. just, mommy, where is consent? Mm. Mm. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> And, I, and my folks are like, this is your work. So manage, yeah. <laughs> make peace. Yeah. yeah. I'm curious just in terms of how you envision them. You're in a field where we mm -hmm. are exposed a lot to feminism, yeah. good and bad and ugly side of it. Yeah. Um, and, and toxicism yeah. in, in some cases, but also the very important power mm -hmm. of having like feminist leadership and feminist yeah. mentality. Yeah. When you're, you know, across life. Because feminism is not really about, I mean, it's about rights. Yeah. How is it looking at boys and thinking, what kind of world are you getting into? Exactly. You know? And I, I think I think I just want them to be, first of all, I always tell them, I want you to feel loved and I actually want you to thrive. I want you mm. to be happy and do what you love. Mm. Mm. My seven-year-old right now, everything is football, which mm. I'm like, you know what? I'm okay. Mm. So every day I'm grilled. What was mm. the last goal that Mbappe scored? Uh -huh. I'm like, I can't. So now I've had to literally go and do a deep dive. Mm -hmm. Um, Mali is more artistic, but mm. I'm just like, just be healthy human beings. Yeah. Don't be mean. Mm. Don't be, and then don't have people be mean to mm. you. Mm. Be decent, mm. but also speak up. Mm. So it's, yes, it's about feminism, but it's mm. also just about being a decent human being. Mm. Literally. For me, that's what's important. Mm. Mm. And, and, and normalizing that anyone mm. can lead, mm. anyone can be strong, mm. anyone can be vulnerable, no right. matter what they look like. Yeah. So yeah. I try to emphasize that thing for, mm. it doesn't matter what anyone looks mm. like. Mm. They can be a pilot, a rally driver, they mm. can be your teacher, they mm. can be whatever it is. Mm. 
and respect. Mm. So I really like seeing them mm. say hi to everyone, for example, mm. and normalize that. Mm. There's no thing. Yeah. Don't just normalize decent behavior. Mm. Mm. Um, but I do talk about things like consent because mm. the world is a bit of a hot mess because yep. of things like yep. <laughs> consent. Yeah. Yeah. So I try to tell them yeah. you can't just grab. You yeah. can't just. Yeah do what you want are they shielded from your whole life and yeah. all its publicity good bad and ugly not really well mm. i mean it's only when we're in spaces where people tend to recognize mm. me is mm. when they'll they feel like they want to wear a hat and not hide. really no no mm. no no, no, no. Mm. it's not like that i don't mm. think it's ever been like that mm. for me mm. I, mm. I think because my space That's is a bit different good. i'm not yeah. like a hip-hop artist or yeah. oh. it's a bit different it's it's more yeah. There's it's, love, but it's chill. Yeah. And um, you socialize with people who are conscious. You there know? you go. Yeah. Maybe in some instances when I've done campus activations, mm. they're more excited. Mm. So they'll mob and take selfies. Mm. Mm. And that's happened once or twice. I remember I was at a mall mm. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. don't run to it. They'll scare them, mm. <laughs> you know, mm. but it's not. That's not mm. my community. Mm. They're very mm. chill. Mm. They'll be like, hey, what's up? Oh, hi, mm. guys. Mm. Or, hey, can I take a It's very, very mm. chill. It's not what I'm sure yeah. some of my pals, like, can, uh, you know, whoever get. Yeah. Um, so no, that's not a thing for mm. them. And also tell mm. them, no, it's normal. So they know mom's work mm. also comes with some form of some people knowing her. Yeah. That's their normal. Okay. So it's not, mm. it's just their normal. Mm. Mm. So yeah, I think for me, what's important is things like respecting boundaries. Because yeah. yeah. that has just created all kinds of issues. So mm. hopefully they begin to integrate before you ask for, before you demand something, you need mm. to ask, mm. especially when it comes to somebody else, right. especially when it comes to their body, especially mm. when it comes to what you want from, you mm. have to ask. Mm. Mm. And if they say no, mm. Okay, like my young one, mm. Akimali, he's very passionate. So things like, Mwah. so I'm like, you know, you can't just go blowing kisses or demanding kisses mm. from girls. Mm. Kindly mm. ask them. Mm. He does. Now he does. Mm. It's consent early. Oh. Also, I'm like, you're four. I don't know how you're a lover boy. <laughs> I'm not at, sure. At, at, at this stage. At that stage, he's very jeans, passionate. Jeans, you are. Maybe, where, maybe, where I, maybe <laughs> I'm the lover. I'm a lover, not a fighter. But, but yeah, so. That's just a cute example, yeah, yeah. but normalizing even now right. that he knows as he's growing up, because I'm pretty sure he's going to be whatever kind of lover boy yeah. he'll be or, or passionate partner yeah. is just don't, de don't demand it. Mm. Ask and mm. if, if you're told no, step away. Mm. Mm. Simple as that, yeah. January 11th, um, 2024, you'll be, you'll be the big 40. 40. I have next no shame. Year. It's next year. So no um, shame. looking back though at, at your journey, yeah. how do you feel? Hey, you ask a deep question and my alarm goes off. <laughs> I feel like I've lived 50 lives. Mm. If you think about it, 20, 2003 mm. was when I first started working. I've been working for 20 years. Mm. <laughs> the other day I was like, maybe I should retire because I'm actually tired. <laughs> then yeah, I realized tired. I'm tired because I've been grinding for 20 no, years. Go and retire, like <laughs> literally. But I love... Get new tires. <laughs> get new tires. But I, I am honestly so grateful that I wake up every day getting to do what I love, that I somehow curated this life where I'm able to, where I worked really hard to build a brand and a portfolio that allows me, literally every day I'm so grateful for mm. that. So mm. it doesn't matter if I'll be 40 or 45 or 50, mm. I just feel like I'll always be in a space that I can lean into, that I love. Mm. I feel like opportunities evolve as you get older, as, as you're younger mm. and I think I'm very excited about the next chapter mm. because I don't know about the same with men, probably, mm -hmm. but with women, there's a self-awareness and actualization from 35, something hits different. Mm. Oh, it's so nice. Mm. You're just more comfortable in your skin. Mm. You begin to be more self-aware and mm. less apologetic. Mm. And that allows you to do more things. Mm. And so that's where I am right mm. now. Mm. Like just if there's a request, even things like traveling for work, mm. I would tell myself all kinds of things. My God, the babies are so young. But now I'm like, okay, but I have a community of people who can be with them mm. while I do something that I love. Mm. Um, or friendships, mm. evolving with new friendships mm -hmm. where you're all on the same page. Mm. There's something absolutely beautiful mm. about evolving. So mm. I'm most excited about where this evolution will take me yeah. as a parent, mm. as a partner, mm. as a social justice champion, mm. as a global public speaker. Mm. Um, I'm just very mm. excited. It's because I'm becoming more and more comfortable mm. in my skin. Mm. Mm. So that's a gift. And I wish people would know. I know younger people here, 
this and be and they hear things like it'll be easier when you're older i mm. promise it gets easier when you're older mm. well, adulting is kind of tough either way across the board mm. but there's a self actualization that allows you to just to just take it in mm. um and extend more grace to yourself mm. and say i i don't know everything and that's fine mm. i don't want everything and that's fine mm. i don't have to be everyone's friend i always have this thing where i'm like i'm not pizza you don't all have to like me mm. <laughs> all those things begin to make so much more sense as you're mm. older mm. and i'm that's just i want to do i i'm trying to figure out what i want to do for 40, for 40. yeah, yeah, yeah but i definitely that. want it to be a moment mm. whether that means a party mm. or something online mm. i'm i'm excited mm. and i'm i think i'm just i don't know if the word of proud of how far i've come mm. is because i still mm. think there's a, a way to go. i still feel like i have a lot of learning to do a lot of learning to do i realized i do this thing where i have meetings with myself <laughs> AGMs with myself mm. and started in covid mm-hmm. um so i sit with myself and i check myself mm. i did a video the other day mm. where i referenced a tupac track so i told you i've mm-hmm. been doing a deep dive mm. into mm. i ain't mad at you is mm. not it's one of my favorite tracks mm. because it, i always feel like it gives me a different message mm. and i just like how in this in the track he talks about how even though you're no longer my friend it's okay yeah. like i wish you well but it's so fine yeah it's so deep <laughs> mm. like i don't know how you're in his 20s and <laughs> so things like that make mm. you reflect and say mm. the way you release people people are releasing you mm. that's the video i did mm. and people tell me oh my mm. god your video made me do a self check mm. but that's what evolution does it mm. makes you realize you also have to work on yourself you're also a burden to someone yeah. don't sit there thinking oh this person burdens me and you mm. and either way extend grace to yourself even though this person had to release you for whatever reason mm. it doesn't make you a horrible person mm. it just means you're evolving you're a work in progress yeah. and it yeah. also means that somebody else while somebody else is releasing you somebody else is embracing you and i think it's problematic if you're not changing also yeah if, uh, if, if you are not changing if you remain yeah. in the same bubble i think there are seasons and if you're not changing with the seasons then it's highly problematic highly as a of fact, yeah. and, but it's hard to we, it, we should be consistent yeah. but change should be you know yeah change should yeah. be the and yeah. and and recognize where you're the problem i think yeah. i was i was dealing with a lot of personal trauma mm. in the last few years and i think in many ways i would tend to project mm. i had to check myself mm. um and that's how i've also rebuilt healthy relationships with certain clients where mm. I, i've gone back to them and said hey i'm sorry i just don't feel like i handled our last meeting well mm. it took a lot of growth mm. to get to the place where i said you could have handled mm. that better mm. or saying I don't like how you handled that meeting with me mm. and this is why mm. and having them say I see your point now mm. those mm. are the things that make me yeah look forward to mm. evolving because I'm mm. like you've do, you're doing the work mm. where you're recognizing mm. your flaws but you're also letting people know yeah. in a very respectful way yeah. and that's why I feel like I'm strengthening relationships mm-hmm. with certain brands mm-hmm. and clients and mm. friendships because mm. there's also friends who yeah. I said I feel like I just wasn't I wasn't responding much to you mm. and I'm really sorry. And mm. one of them actually said, "Yeah, I was feeling so bad. Mm. Now we're talking again." Mm. Others mm. are still very hurt. Mm. They they're not ready to do that mm. with me and I'm like, mm. "It's fine." Mm. So that for me is the biggest blessing in mm. evolving and getting comfortable in your skin is knowing yeah. that you're becoming a better version of yourself mm. even though healing is messy and mm. it's not linear. Mm. So there's a pain process yeah. to it, yeah. but there's also a beautiful outcome yeah. where you're yeah. every day you're more and more comfortable yeah. in your skin. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I'm, ex- I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah, really really nice and um your story is one that I hope in your 40th you could also potentially publish you like your autobiography for the first 40. Aye. Because Actually, why not? I mean you you you've sat with us this whole afternoon and shared up until here. I I believe this should be like in a book. Um, yeah. you have your first book you yeah. know uh, no harm doing another yeah that's not a bad idea though yeah. see Because the seeds you're planting and, and you already have told the story so you know this can be firstly <laughs> whoever with the person the researcher is this this can be you know mm. this is it because i think it's a very powerful story oh, and we hope you. to hear it now but also during that time probably re air yeah just because um it's 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 very powerful and i'm sure then that even the things that you feel not ready to share now yeah. you know would have cooked enough and the meal yeah. would be ready to be served i like how you've put it cook i even now mm. even this conversation yeah i know that there's a lot that's still cooking yeah. um for example um uh, sometimes i'm in a space where in as much as i'm um you know quote and quote a public figure i may not need or want the attention for a season yeah. literally i'm just like you know what i'm okay laying mm. low mm. and i'm okay not sharing my story mm. and i'm okay because what i'm doing is 
marinating on other things. Mm. Mm. And there's a saying I read somewhere that says, um, grow in private until you're ready to share in public. Yeah. And that's the stage I'm in right now. Mm. I'm not mm. doing a lot of interviews, mm. not out of anything or avoiding. I'm just like, I'm okay not mm. saying anything right mm. now. Mm. Genuinely, mm. I'm okay not doing one million endorsements mm. and events right now. Mm. I'm good mm. because I know the evolution that's happening within me. Mm. Um, and I'm and I'm really leaning into it and respecting it. So I love leaning into those seasons. Mm. Or mm. I might wake up at 40 and be like, I want every endorsement, mm. and I'm going to be in everyone's face until yeah. they're sick of me. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. But for now, mm. and it goes like that. Some yeah. years I'm yeah. happy to to be out mm. there. Some years mm. I'm happy to be doing the work. Mm. I'm also doing a lot of work behind the scenes. Mm. I don't need the world yeah. to know. Yeah. So I'm constantly working, but I'm like, I don't need to publish everything. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you know you formed a good relationship with mm. yourself, where. Mm. I don't need to be posting all the time. I don't yeah. need the world to know. Mm. But at the same time, I enjoy engaging. I am mm. a digital amplifier, yeah. so I'm going to be. So it's all a dance. Mm. I think there's a post I did in 2021 that I'm still, t I should read it. Mm -hmm. This is the time where I look at the phone and read the post. Uh, it's, it's, it's allowed. It's beautiful. It's allowed. Yeah. 7.30. Yeah, wow. you have saved it at 7.30 p.m. We started this journey at around this afternoon. Then. At like 3.30. Yeah. No, I, I just have to scroll down on my... Because I was going through a lot that time. And I, I like to be honest and post how I'm feeling. But it, it seemed to resonate. It was about healing and being messy. and I this. find that very interesting, by the way. Because... Well, mm. Um, yeah, I observe that there's some people whose journey, mm -hmm. healing journey especially, yeah. um, is around, like, you know, you post. Mm. And then you look back at this years later yeah. or decades later. And then you're like, all right, this is, I, I wrote this book or I wrote this post or I yeah. did this video. At my moment of greatest pain, yeah. when I look back right now, it's very different. Yeah, because there's I see some, where I've come. Yeah, and there's some people who that, you know, like when you are, yeah. you fear that if you post, yeah. when you're going through, maybe you may post something really drastic. I think you should post when you're ready. Like even this one, when I posted it, it was a month or two. I was still in healing but not super raw that day. Because mm. that can also be, mm. you have to be ready to deal with whatever comes at you. Mm. Um, and it's interesting, some of the feedback that came from this post. So I wrote here, it's okay, healing is messy, and you'll have good days and bad. Some days you'll be in good form, some days you won't. The secret in being kind to yourself, the secret is being kind to yourself as you dance between the two. Mm. We're all just trying to get by as we can. Mm. It doesn't make you a bad person, a mm. poor leader, a terrible parent, an insensitive sibling, an ungrateful child, a difficult colleague, or a distant friend. Mm. At that moment, you're in bad form. Mm. Just remember, healing takes time. Let the people around you understand mm. that just like there's always time for pain, there's always time for healing, mm. and you're not alone. It got 875 comments and 29,000. I was so shocked. You know the way sometimes you post and you're just like, ah. I was stopped in malls, and all the comments were, oh my God, this is, this is what I'm going through. To me oh right my now. God, mm. thank you for the reminder. Mm. I needed this. Oh mm. my gosh, I felt mm. every word. Mm. Words aren't enough. Mm. It, was, mm. it was shocking because yeah. I posted it for what you said. Mm. It was a reminder like, mm. you remember this pain? Mm. Just post it so that mm. when you go back. Mm. But my point is I always come back to this. Yeah. When I'm in the pits, mm. I'm like, remember, healing is messy. Yeah. Remember, you're not, it's not necessarily, linear. it's not linear. Mm. Exactly. Mm. So that's, it's mm. a constant reminder. Yeah. So I always go back to that when mm. I'm having a moment. Mm. I'm just like, Janet, this thing is not linear. Mm. Sit mm. in your feelings, cry, yeah. Yeah. moan, mm. watch Netflix, yeah. and then pick up and move on <laughs> and be kind to yourself. Yeah. But sit with your feelings yeah. while, you're, while you tend to yourself. Mm. You know, while you're like, okay, you're feeling your emotions now. Mm. You're feeling the wave of emotions. Mm. Feel them. I feel like your story and Viola's, like you should really just do a book. And Viola. Yeah. Viola Davis. Your, your stories should be like a, alongside and each other. And Egot and me. Yeah. Hey. Like because of why not? Especially hey. as, 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 as as it keeps unfolding. You know some things you open me up to trolling. Sasa <laughs> ona, I'm going to be like, Viola. No, true. But why not? I mean. I love her though. Yeah. All these women. Yeah. Let me tell you. Now, when I've been watching in real life podcast with Angie Martinez, mm -hmm. the reason I love it mm -hmm. is because all these women we used to grind to their music. Yeah. Mary yeah, J, are. Ashanti, yeah, yeah. hearing them today yeah. about what they've been through. Yeah. You feel like it's a community like, oh, Kumbe Tulikotuna Pitiya, the mm, same thing. It's mm, really beautiful. Mm, mm. I like, I love seeing people winning. Mm, yeah. So I'm like, you, you're all winning now. Like and you're there's, thriving. There's, to every glory, there's a story. So yeah. that's, 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 that's the story that yeah. I think matters and resonates the most. And I feel like this <laughs> year is so big on comebacks for so yeah. many people. Oh, yeah. I just love seeing people oh, I like win. That. I yeah. love seeing people win. So I when like I see... That all these people who went through the most mm. and they're coming out and they're glowing mm. and they're mm. 
publishing mm. or putting stuff out mm. it, it mm. just makes me so happy because mm. it's a reminder like yeah. you can actually yeah. do this so mm. i i also tend to i also tend to consume content that's very uplifting yeah and very in tune with 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 what i'm feeling mm. and going through so mm. thank you janet thank we you. are very super grateful um this has been janet mbugwa on the did Didi with Maxi, thank you for the time that we are like absolutely honored and um, out.